Um, my name is Peter Martin. I'm a Jumas volunteer. And besides doing stuff in, in the Jumas community, I also organize a local Linux user group with monthly meetings and Open Coffee Name, which is a business event. And when I'm not doing these kind of things, I work uh, in Nijmegen. Uh, Nijmegen is the oldest city in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, this is the Netherlands, this is Germany, Belgium, and it's here, just in this corner. Um, it's 2,000 years old, really old for the Netherlands. And we have a really nice building on top of a hill. Uh, we can't compare it with Acropolis, of course, because uh, this is not that old and not that nice. And you can see it anywhere because there are trees around. So this is where I work in this building. It's a, uh, a really huge building. I have my office, uh, DB8. And I do custom Joomla support and also development. Besides that, I'm co-founder of a company called Data2.eu. And we do an online processing uh, tool to do processing in Max. In this presentation, uh, all the links will be blue, and the presentation will be online afterwards. So it will be published on slides.dba.nl, and I will also uh, tweet about it with the link. So um, you can find everything online later on. Furthermore, I will show you uh, some screens, and I, it's a lot of options. I don't expect you to, to know everything by heart after my presentation, but I just show it and you can use the sheets afterwards to do it yourself if you like. Yeah. Uh, harder? Okay. Okay. Louder. 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 So, um, in this presentation, I will start with a couple of principles that, you, that, that, that I always use for websites. And then I will show you the best practices regarding optimizing Joomla backend. So I have this really fancy book, really old, that's called Joomla Website Principles. It's volume one, maybe first edition, I don't know. But in it there are a couple of chapters that are really interesting, like be safe. With Joomla, you have the freedom to change everything, uh, to use Joomla, to use it for whatever you like. But if you use Joomla, do it in a safe way. Use Joomla and its extensions the third-party extensions in a responsible and also safe way. Meaning, first of all, you should get the software from trusted sources. So Joomla from Joomla.org and extensions from the developer's website. Test it on the test site before installing it on your live site. Update, update, update. I hope you all have Joomla uh, 3.9.4 at the moment, who has lower versions than 3.9.4. <laughs> um, there is vulnerability in it, and that vulnerability can be triggered. And then people can install sample content on your website. So I would update as fast as possible. Uh, also, create backups, and I can recommend Akiva Backup for that. <laughs> the second chapter in this book is P Update Proof, meaning you can change Joomla, anything in Joomla and extensions. You can study it and change it because the source code is open source. However, that doesn't mean that you have to change everything because core hacks are evil. If you change something in the core of Joomla or extensions and there will be an update, uh, your changes may be overwritten. So instead of that, use overrides. We have template override, layout overrides, language overrides, or use plugins because those will not be overridden. The third thing in my book is called Be Active. You are using Joomla. Uh, Joomla is open source and it's free of charge. So if you want that Joomla will continue for a long time, help improving Joomla. And you can help improving Joomla in a lot of ways. First, you can contribute in any way. Maybe you are a designer or maybe you can write code, maybe you can do technical support, whatever, and also anywhere. Um, we have an international community, and we have a lot of local commu uh, national communities and local communities. If you can help out in any of those, it's great. Furthermore, share your knowledge, and that means go to conferences like these, talk with people about what extensions you use, 
why you use Joomla, what you change in Joomla for your customers, so you can learn from each other. There's also a fourth chapter in the book, it's called Be Smart. And this is also known as Stick to the Core. I, personally, try to limit third-party extensions as much as possible. Because then the website is easier to manage. Less software conflicts, easier to upgrade to newer versions, and you will have better performance, because sometimes uh, modules and plugins can slow down things. That doesn't mean that I don't use any extensions, any third-party extensions. Extensions I often use are those. Uh, the bottom one are extensions I make myself, and the other ones are paid or free extensions that I use from the Joomla community. These extensions can all work without... I mean, if you, if you install those on your website and use them, and you remove them, Joomla will continue to work. And that's the extension I really like. So uh, it doesn't break if you update an extension, yeah, crashes your site or something like that. Then another chapter called Be User Friendly. And I like this book a lot. It's written by an American. And it is uh, a lot of open doors, a lot of things which is common sense. But it's nice to have all those things of common sense in a, in a list. And this book is about usability and reducing choices. Um, like, you could remove what you don't need, and I will show you a lot later on. And also, uh, the last one, I made it myself, don't make me click. <laughs> Below computer, this chapter is called. I mean, computers are there to automate your stuff. And if you are doing things a lot, you should look, how can I automate it? Let the computer work for you instead of you work for the computer. So, don't do everything manually, but try to do things automatically uh, without a lot of clicking, of clicking. So now, I will continue with the best practices. First of all, the Joomla installation. Um, if you install Joomla, you will have a lot of content, probably. Especially if you install sample content. Who uses sample content when installing? Okay, who uses... Um, a quick install of a template provider, okay, and you have to remove a lot of stuff afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I recommend doing it uh, the other way. Just install Joomla without content and build everything up from there. Yes, I know, the sample content is really convenient to look how it works. I mean, the quick, uh, uh, quick install uh, stuff from template developers have everything in it, but it's only for an example, and if you look at it and you build it next to it, you understand it much better. Um, you can work live or on a development website, or maybe you have a live website and you want to change a lot of stuff. I recommend doing it locally, but don't be like me, and you are changing stuff and then you discover, oh, what's the live site? What I would recommend is change the admin template for, of the live site. So, um, if you go to extensions, templates, drop down filter uh, of administrator, then you have the ISIS template, and if you go to advanced, you can change these colors. So, what I do on my development environment, I make it green. So, and the live site could be red or whatever, so you have more uh, difference between those. Then, something else. If you create a new website, are you developing it on the server or on your local computer? Can I have can I see hands for a local server? Local computer I mean? Uh, on the server directly? Okay. Um, I recommend doing it on your local computer because if you start local, it's easier to add media when you it's faster than uploading everything. Just you have a folder, you just put it in a folder. Debit overrides, I mean you can use Joomla at the backend and go to templates and do all the overrides there. I prefer doing it locally in an uh, IDE, an editor, because it's much faster and you can just press click and look at how it looks like. I use Akiba Backup to create the backup when I'm ready and then I restore the finished version on the server. That way I think for why means it's faster. It doesn't mean that you have to do it like me, 
I, I just recommend it. So the next thing, disable needless things in your Joomla site. About components, if you install the Joomla core, who is using the Newsfeeds component? No, no, you are not. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't use it. No, it's on one. It's on one website. Okay, and all the other websites no. don't use it. Okay, so if you click on components, it's still there, probably. So all the components that you don't use, remove them. Don't install them. Uninstall them. Just uh, oh, and if you have a lot of extensions, so you, you install a lot of third-party extensions, your website might be like this. The things you don't need, if you really don't need it and it's not Joomla 4, remove them. Because you need to update them otherwise. The things of the Joomla core that you don't need, oh, no, 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 disable. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the names are very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, you're disruptive. So, uh, yeah, but we know that too. So, um, I would disable those components that I don't need and that are core. So I go to extensions, manage, manage. Then I use the search tools. I click on uh, the unprotected, uh, and I select administrate and component. And these components are all shown in the uh, administrator uh, components menu. I click the ones that I don't need. I only keep fields and search. All the other I just remove. And then I have really less choices, easier to work with. So this is the first thing. The second thing is module positions. Who has a website? And if you want to uh, assign a new module position, a module to position, see these three. Um, yeah, who's, who's using these three? No one. Yes. I mean, if you are using it, okay, but then it's okay that it's here, but if you are not using it, I would just remove it. And not remove the template, because if you remove the template, it might be back with a new uh, update or something. Go again uh, to extensions, manage, manage. You, the search tool, now you only say template. And just disable the templates that you don't use. So I disabled these three and hater. And now, module positions, just start with protostar, because it's the only template on this website. And I only have the protostar module positions, which is easy to work with. Um, who has, use, who, uses an edit, who uses an editor in the website that looks something like this? Um, this is too much. And it's not ordered in a logical way. So, uh, I didn't know this, because I use another editor, I will show you later. But this is uh, Tiny MCE. If you go to Extensions, Plugins, and select Editor Tiny MCE, you can edit everything. So in my case, I changed the user, super user group. Here it says uh, set zero, and I change it to set one. And set one has less icons, but you can move them and remove them, change them. So now my ed editor looks like this, still too much. Thus. I have all these. These are not icons in the editor itself. It are plugins of Joomla. It are the uh, editor's extended plugins. So if you go to extensions, plugins, I just disabled all of them. And now I really have, I miss them. I don't miss them. But if you need them, just leave them, of course. Actually, I use JCE editor. When you install JCE editor out of the box, it will look something like this with all the options. And of course these. Uh, in the previous slide, I showed you how to disable the bottom row. But I also changed something here. I changed something in JCE. I created a new profile. I can export the profile and import it in new websites. And I only have things that I need. I grouped with things that I want, like these are all on characters, these are uh, paragraphs, how to outline them, uh, uh, lists, uh, these are all uh, with hyperlinks and some copying and other stuff. So it's logical and I use it on all the websites of my customers like this. If my customers need extra, I just add it, but this is just how I start. So, filters. Um, 
If you work with Joomla, you will probably have a lot of content. You might have a lot of articles. And there is a really a nice feature, which is uh, the search bar here, where you can add a title of an article and you can search on, on the title. But maybe you know the ID of the article because you are working with it a lot. And then it's also easy to do ID dot dot, I mean uh, column, and then one. And then it will only show all the IDs with column one. This is since Joomla 1.0 in the core. I think since Joomla 3.9, you can also search within content. If you do content semicolon and the word congratulations, the Joomla sample content has one article which says something like congratulations, you have managed to install Joomla or something like that. So this is here. There is no congratulations in the title. It's in the article itself, so you can find it this way. And you will probably want to click less, like I also want. What you can do is pre-select options. So if you create a new article, and by default it says published, uncategorized, public, and all languages. If you want to create two articles with different settings, I recommend to go uh, to articles, so content articles, and use the search button. Uh, over there, select the things you want. In my case, I want to select unpublish, uncategorized, registered, and English. So I have an article state, category, article level, and language. I set those. And if I create new, they're already pre-selected. So it saves four clicks. And when you create another article with uh, save and new, uh, these are still like I configured them for this. Um, Something else, we might want to have a better overview of the content and also uh, faster. In 2015 I was uh, in Nice for uh, the Jubilee Day France in 2015 and they have also an Acropolis. They're not as nice as here, it's just a parking place called Acropolis. <laughs> but anyway, I spoke with someone and uh, he was complaining about um, he missed something in the category. Like uh, in the past you had some sort of counter in it. And I discussed it with him and I decided to, to uh, develop it. And a lot of people helped me out. And the person who complained helped out testing. And then uh, it came in the core. And it was in 3.5. Uh, these two links go to articles in Joomla magazine uh, describing how this whole process of getting something in the Joomla core works and how we yeah, ran into problems and uh, with, with the code, etc. But anyway, um, when I was doing it, I learned a lot about how Joomla works with the search uh, toolbars. So if you click here on the 8, it says it's the category Joomla, you will uh, filter uh, all the articles on, based on uh, the category 8, I'm uh, sorry, the category Joomla and only published, and this is to unpublished, this archived and deleted. So if I click here, uh, you should only see all the articles from the published in the Joomla uh, that are um, the yeah, access level one. So this is underneath the, in the, in the, in the, in the, how do you say, in the request that you do. You don't see those. But if you know how to uh, spot those, you can look at the filters and you can use those yourself. Like, here is published one, and if I want to see all the unpublished ones, I can change the one to zero, and I will see this. So now I see all the unpublished ones. And please remember this, because on the next uh, item, administrator modules, I will come to this again, back to this again. So here it is, admin modules. Um, maybe you have one website, maybe you have 10, in every website you might have different images sizes and your customers they are sent you a lot of emails Peter um, what size should my images be if I upload them maybe you have a third party extensions like JCE that automatically changes it but still it will be it's, it's nice if you have an overview of it so what I do I go to extensions modules I select administrator modules and I create a new module the custom one custom HTML and I assign it to the C panel so I have information in the back end of the website. When my customers log in, they can see tips like this. Um, a friend of mine used this to link to his movie film clips. 
and their way explain stuff. So this is sort of, sort of uh, yeah, extra help for yourself and also for your customers. So um, I just showed you how to use the filter stuff in the previous uh, section. So if we go um, to more fast content, here I created a couple of links. It's also a custom module, but below the create new art news articles or below the show URLs with most 404 errors, I added these links. So the show 404 errors, it will link to uh, option is called redirect, which is the redirect component. It will show all the links ordered by uh, the hits. So the, the one with the most will be on top of the bottom, or the bottom. But I do here desk, meaning the most hits will be on top. If you go directly to a content redirect, there is no real ordering, only the last is on top. But with this link directly, you go to how you want to see it, probably. And this is what I do also for my customers. Um, this is a powerful feature. Uh, that I use a lot. Um, it is a lot of uh, uh, screens, but I will just go through it in very go through with it very fast. So um, we might to limit we want might limit we want to limit choices, and we can do that by limiting the functionality. I think we all here are really handy with Joomla. We can do whatever why, why we want, but um, our customers are other types of people. <laughs> And we don't want them to see everything and that they can do any, everything in the website. So I would like to use Joomla's access control list, which is in the core. Um, you could create a group and an access level. And then in your components, under permissions, you can assign permissions to those access levels in the components. So the first thing you have to do, in users, groups, create a new group. My new group will be called limited. And the very most important thing here is the group parent should be public. Start with the lowest level. Um, we want to build up everything. We don't want to assign them to a super user and then do it vice versa. We start with nothing. So the limited group has no access to anything. We have to do it manually. So uh, the second thing is under users view the special level. Later on I will show you that this is not the right way, but now for the moment we do it like this. So I click on it and we also have all the other levels and now I click limited. So my uh, limited group is now assigned to the special level as well. The next thing is we create a new user. In the back end users manage new. I create a new user. I already have a super user. And now I create a new user, Alice. And Alice, I will assign her to limited only. All the others I click, I don't click, limited. And when I save it, I can see that Alice has limited. Is access to limited. She has the limit. She is uh, assigned to the limited group. Now, we have to give her the rights. Uh, I mean, the group. We have to give the group the rights to access the administrator configuration. And this is difficult. We have to go to system, global configuration, and then um, if I, have go, I go to permissions, the first thing you do is here you select the limited group, then here you have all the things that uh, the limited group might do or not, might not do, and administrator login, it's now uh, not allowed, and I click it and I make it allowed. Then I save it, and now the limited group has access to the administrator backend. So what I do now, I have a, a, a second browser, and there I log in with Alice, and this is what Alice sees. Really clean Joomla. This is what we want. Um, the only thing she can do is she can look in the, on the front end, she can look at her own profile, and she can uh, ask for help at the Joomla, I mean, uh, you get the help files. So she can't do anything. So now we would like to give her some access. I go back to the administrator. Uh, component and for all the components that we want to give her access to we have to do a couple of things so I want to her to be able to write articles for the website and to edit it so I go to article options and there you have permissions 
You can also go to the global configuration and then click articles and then you also have the permissions. It's the same. I go to the limited group and here is all the things that I want her to do or not to do with the site. So the first thing, she should have administrator uh, interface access. I wanted to create stuff and I wanted to edit stuff. And if I go back to Alice, to the back end, now Alice has here content, a new article, and she can do article, stuff with articles. But if she wants to create a new article, this is what she has, view and edit. There's no delete, there's no publish, because I did not add it to this profile. So this is how you do start things, and you have to find uh, with your client the best way to optimize it for them, or for yourself, or your friends if you have a website with them. Another uh, really powerful feature, since I think you are 3.8, but I'm not sure, is menus. Um, the back, the back-end menus, you have a really lot of options, and maybe you want to have it differently. Before we start, we have to do one thing. I just assigned a group called limited to the user level, special. But if I do, I, if I create a new menu uh, in the back end and it's assigned to special, the super administrator will have double menus. So we have to uh, do something with those. So I go back to the view access levels, I create a new level called limited. And then I assign limited, as, uh, limited was assigned to special and now it's, it's only assigned to limited. Then uh, I go to menus, manage, administrator, and I create a new menu. And when I create a new menu, I also do permissions because I want uh, the group to allow uh, to see the administrator interface, otherwise they can't see it. And when I've done that, then uh, I go back to the user. Oh no, this is, this is my own user. I can see limited as a new menu here under administrator. And then you have to add items, so they can do stuff. So I created news articles, which is just, um, if you click it, you go to the, to the article manager, with the um, category uh, news selected. And here I create four, uh, four directs. <coughs> if I do it like this, will Alice be able to see new articles and also the four, uh, four directs? No. Because I have to do one thing. In the administrator module, I have to create a menu first. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the menu items. In the administrator module, I have to create a menu first, um, which is it has to show limited, and I have to give access in the redirect manager to Alice because I did not do that beforehand. Otherwise, um, she might be able not to see it or see it, but she can't work with it. So the result is. Um, Alice now has uh, two options, news articles and 404 directs. Further, she doesn't have anything to work with. This is the only thing she can do now. Then, my uh, last one. Uh, it was already mentioned uh, in the talk, uh, stick to the core. I really like to stick to the core. And sometimes people use third party extensions, while you can use a Joomla core. For instance, uh, a couple of months ago, I got a new customer. She had uh, uh, used a module, a paint module, and the module would show all kinds of images for her portfolio with the title of the name of the portfolio item. And actually, all the items were Joomla articles and the uh, images were just intro images. So, um, it was not compatible with Joomla, uh, I mean with PHP 7, so she needed to update but she had to buy a new, uh, new license for it, which she did. And then she discovered that the layout was totally different. And then she called me, could I help out? Yes, I can, but not with this module. Um, I prefer to do it with an alternative template override, so with a Joomla core, because it's free. I mean, she has to pay me, but she has to pay me to do the work for the, for the model as, module as well. Um, there are no updates uh, needed, and you don't have to assign module positions, which I really like. I mean. Modules are nice, but to assign them to men menus is a lot of work, so I try to do uh, create menu items myself to, to add everything I want over there. So the Joomla default category block is this. I have an, uh, uh, an image and I have some texts and the title. This is the normal output of Joomla. 
Uh, in de source code of the HTML, of when you use Protostar, you can see com content, view category, and layout blog. So what I do, three things. First, I create in uh, Protostar, in the HTML, com content category. This is a sort of overview, uh, override. I don't do a override, I just create a couple of files. An XML, CSS, and a PHP. So my XML looks like this. Not really, because if you do it correctly, this will be a language string. But just for example, if you do it like this, and maybe some parameters, the parameters are there so my customer can select the category by herself. And now, even there is no code for the logic or for the CSS, you already have a new item in, when you create a new menu item. It's there, it's called portfolio. You can click it, and then you can uh, select the category. In this case, I selected my principles. But it is just not working because you have nothing there. So we need to have some CSS and some logic in the PHP. So the CSS is too long here, but if you go to the, to the sheets, you can scroll and copy everything. This is not my CSS. I found it on the internet or on, I think it was code, something with code snippet or something. Um, there are a couple of people uh, really fancy with CSS and it was a great example that worked for my site. And it's using CSS grid, which is nice. So this is the CSS. The second thing you need is the PHP. And I have three, uh, I mean three parts. The first part, you can see I use the new code standard Joomla. This is uh, since Joomla 3.8. Um, here I load some of the libraries. I specify them, I mean. And here I start loading them. And here, if you were here for the previous presentation, which was about modules, how to create modules, how to create all these kinds of things, this was with the advanced part at the end, where they, uh, they, they talk to a model that is already there in Joomla. In this case, I talk to the articles model. And what I do, I just define how many articles I want. Uh, I only want the published ones, etc. So here I do everything manually. I don't use uh, the model of uh, the, the com category, or I mean of um, com content, uh, the category uh, block. I just get it myself here. And then uh, some part that will just output some HTML so you have nice, uh, nice images. And th th this is basically it. And then it looks something like this. So these are clickable. And this is the title and this is the image. And they are all nice layout, just with uh, an alternative template override. Um, then maybe everyone here has a favorite component, probably. That's in the component list. And you use it a lot. And sometimes they look a bit like each other. And you, where is it? What do you do? I, I create a language override. So let's assume that I use redirects a lot, which is not good because, yeah, <laughs> if you have a good website, you should not use this. I mean, you don't need it. But let's assume that I want to have redirect a lot and use it a lot. Then I create a language override and I change. Uh, here I look choose for redirect, for value, and here I see com redirect, I click it, and then I can here give it an alternative text. And what I do, I assign uh, a greater than sign, so it's on top of the list. So you can do that with all the extensions. Just create a, a language override for the extension you, you want, just rename it. Easy. Then uh, a couple of bonus things. If you are uh, tired of clicking options, uh, I am. Um, I created uh, my own extension for this. It's a component called Options Manager. Instead of installing Joomla, go into the articles, uh, options, and say I don't want to see the category, the author, uh, the navigation, uh, the icons. I just click them off. I did it for 12 years. Then I decided, yeah, I should do it in another way. So I created something for myself and I decided hmm, maybe other people can uh, use it as well. So I have two uh, versions, a free one where you can export component options so you don't have to import them again and a commercial version where you can use them with a patch. So you can just import a whole list of files where all the configurations are in it. 
And if you use JC, JCE editor, you have to add your license code. Um, in my uh, um, uh, configuration file, license code is included. So if I import it, the license code is already there. So yeah, this saved me some time. Something else. Who thinks that the article editor of Gmail is complicated? Okay. Uh, I had the same uh, same idea. And together uh, with someone else in the Gmail community, we created uh, D2 content. The free version is already available. When you install it, you have this article manager. I mean, you start with the title and an alias. Uh, here you can put your text. Here an image, uh, an alt text, uh, the status, the category, meta description, language, that's all. If you need more, you, sh you could use the Jula uh, one. And you can use these next to each other. I mean, maybe you can give this to your customer and you can use uh, the old one yourself. Last tip, where is whatever? If you are looking at something in June and you don't know where it is, like one time uh, I got a new customer, um, could you please change this? I looked into the, the site, oh yeah sure, why not? Looks easy. And then I got access and then it looked better. There were only three articles in this website. And they are all unpublished because they were using a uh, page builder. And if you are not using page builders like me, um, it's kind of difficult to, to find where things are. So to save time and to, uh, to be able to do it in the time that we agreed, I just created an export for everything and I use an ED, AD, IDE. I use PHP Storm because I really like it. But you can use NetBeans, Eclipse or whatever. Export the whole database, put the files on your local computer, also create a MySQL dump and I recommend to do it in a way that every record is just one record. So no, no blocks, but just select uh, the insert in one row, uh, the fields and the values. And then look in HTML of the website what you want to change. And you just copy it and in the IDE you search for it. And then you find all the references. Then you find out is it in a database or is it in a file like a template override. This saves you a lot of time if you uh, don't know where to find stuff. So, I think it's really important to be safe with websites. Only use trusted sources. Be update proof, active in the community. Be smart and stick to the core. Also, uh, be user friendly and don't make me think. And also, people who work your, with your website. And don't make me click and make people on your website. You can do so by installing Joomla in the correct way. Like, I would recommend using nothing and only add what you need and not do it vice versa. I would disable needless things. Use filters if you want to search things. Um, use admin modules to get more, give more information. I would create AC, ACL profiles. Uh, I would modify menus and also stick to the core. Uh, this is it. Are there any questions?